I'm Yuma. I'm a sophomore in university. On a cold and snowy night, I was on my way home from my part-time job when I saw a woman walking unsteadily in front of me without an umbrella or coat. What? It's a ghost! I felt myself being overcome with fear and hoped that I would be able to pass her without being bothered. She's so scary! I don't want to provoke her. Eh? She has legs. It's a human! I felt something stirring in my heart. Um, are you okay? <laughs> oh no, I, I shouldn't have spoken to her. Um, are you injured? Shall I call the ambulance or police for you? Uh, no, please don't! But aren't you injured? I'm fine. What? She couldn't have been okay. I thought I was meddling, but I couldn't leave the woman alone. Excuse me, do you know how to make katsudan? Uh... I have a very important exam tomorrow. I want to eat katsudan and get a good night's sleep for good luck. Can you make it for me? <laughs> I don't know if the takeaway at the supermarket is still open, and I can't make it myself, so can you come to my house and make it for me? Mm. She didn't immediately reject my offer, which made me think she didn't have anywhere else to go. I won't do anything strange. <sighs> Say something! I'll feel bad if she's found dead out here tomorrow. Come with me. Come on! Uh. Huh? There's no way she'll refuse. I was expecting her to scream, but she didn't react, and it shocked me a bit. Then I got her to come back to my apartment with me. Here's a change of clothes and a first aid kit. Take a shower and clean your wounds. I'm gonna go shopping. Okay. I went to the supermarket and bought ingredients to make katsudon, and some frozen food just in case she couldn't make the katsudon. She might not even be there when I get back. But when I got back to the apartment, I found her sitting upright in the corner of the room waiting for me. I'm home. She's still here. Relax as if you were at your own house. Are you hurt? Yes. I've bought the ingredients, do you want to make it? Or I have some frozen food we can make if you prefer. I'll make it. I spoke to her while she cooked. It's a small kitchen, so it's hard to cook nice meals. What's your name? My name is Maki. How old are you? I'm 20. Seriously? You're the same age as me. Where were you going? Where do you live? Uh. I'm sorry for asking so many questions. I'll go watch TV. She is definitely in some sort of trouble. After a while, she brought out the katsudan. I was so hungry that I gobbled it up. It's delicious! Oh, thank you! Well, I'll leave you to it. Thank you for your help. Wait, there are no more trains at this time. You should spend the night here. It's snowing, and I can't let you go out there alone. I'll sleep at a friend's house. I won't bother you. She stubbornly refused, but I managed to convince her to sleep in my room. The next day, I had an exam in the afternoon, so I went back to my apartment around midday. Hey, did you clean my apartment? Yes. I thought it would be rude to leave without thanking you, so I waited for you to come back. Thanks for your help yesterday. About that injury, are you a victim of domestic violence or something? Do you want me to call my friend from the football team? No, I just had an argument with my father. What? It's not normal to get bruises from a fight with your parents! I ran away from home, so I'm fine. I'll start looking for a job when the scars go away. I had a lot of my own problems to worry about, 
but I decided to ask her more about her current situation. Do you have any money? You weren't wearing a coat, but... I have some money. I gave my coat to a homeless man who looked very cold. What? Maki, you are too nice to people! Women can work on the street if they really want to buy a new coat. But a homeless man can't do that, right? Is this girl some kind of angel? That bruise won't heal for a few days. You can stay here until it goes away. Maybe you can cook me a meal in return. I'll go sleep at a friend's house. But... We argued for a little while, but eventually she gave in. From that day on, whenever I came home from my part-time job, I ate a meal that Maki had prepared for me. I moved from one friend's house to another to sleep every night. Oh, I used to eat convenience store meals every day, so this is heaven. Good. I made you some more. I forgot how happy food can make me feel. A few weeks later, Maki, your bruise is gone. If it's okay with you, Maki, you can stay in this house forever. Uh, does that mean we're dating? Yeah. I like you, Maki, but I want to respect your feelings. So, I won't touch you until you say it's okay. Because I want to help the girl that I love. If you choose to work at night for the money, you can stay here until you find a day job. Let me think about it for one day. I fell in love with Maki's nice personality. And her cooking skills. I was thinking about it so much that I couldn't sleep that night. The next day... Please take care of me. It's just that I don't hate you, Yuma. But my feelings are still... Okay. Anyway, please stay here. Maki didn't have a cell phone and couldn't put any contact information on her resume. I gave her a cell phone that I signed up for under my name and she started looking for a job right away. I got a job. I start working tomorrow at a hamburger restaurant. That's great! Congratulations! Maki, who is honest and good-natured, seemed to be immediately useful in the store. One month later... It was payday today. I can pay you back the money that I borrowed. Thank you. What? That's a lot of money. It's too much, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I love you, Yuma. Tomorrow is your birthday, right? I know it's a little early, but you can have me as your present. Are you sure? We shared a great feeling of love and we're both happy for the first time in a long time. We ended up living together in a small one-bedroom apartment until I graduated from university. One day, just before graduation, after I graduate, I want to move to a bigger house and marry you. I've got a job, so I want to meet your parents. But they are difficult to get along with. My parents owned a company, and my brother, who was the heir, went missing. Then, they tried to make me marry someone that I didn't like, so I ran away from home. They're the kind of parents who become physically violent when they don't get their way. She tried to convince me otherwise, but eventually, she agreed to let me meet them. Maki's family was very wealthy. When I met her father, though, he appeared to be a helpless old man. You're a disgrace to my family! I would have preferred to never see you again! You appear like this, all of a sudden, to tell me you are marrying this strange man? Excuse me, but you haven't seen your daughter in years. That's not a nice way to talk to her. Who are you talking to? I don't approve of this man. I'm gonna marry Maki. Maki has a lovely personality. This is unacceptable! I gave up talking to her father and left the house earlier than expected. Maki, I'm sorry. I said some terrible things to your father. It's okay. You were right to do so. 
I have to go meet your parents too. I wanted everyone to get along and celebrate our wedding together, but I figured that I had done all I could. It's been three years since that day. Today is our third wedding anniversary. Oh, you made katsudon! This is what we should always eat for our anniversary. Maggie quit working at the hamburger restaurant when I graduated from university and became a full-time employee at another company. She is now working hard at her new job. I hope that one day we will be blessed with a cute little angel and that we can reconcile with Maki's parents.